in this short lecture we'll look at time domain specifications now what are time domain specifications performance specification of a system when you say performance specification you basically specify what you want the system to do they are typically done in the time domain time domain specifications can then be related to closed loop system parameters what you do is you take a uh, the block diagram and find the transfer function now the transfer function will be a function of controller parameters or system parameters you can relate those system parameters to the specifications now based on the specifications you find values for the uh, system parameters that is essentially controller design now it turns out that if you have a closed loop system uh, transfer function that is second order without zeros then there are analytical relationships between system parameters and time domain specifications what this means is you can take any high order system maybe third order or fourth order look at the second order approximation of that high order system look at the time domain specifications and do back of the envelope calculations to find parameters for the approximated second order system and then you can go back to a tool like MATLAB and then do the complete controller design for the higher order system. So you do step by step, do controller design step by step. Now that's why it's very important to understand second order systems. So in this lecture, we'll understand the relationship between time domain specifications and a generic closed loop system that is second order without zeros. Now there are a couple of system responses of interest. And the first one is impulse response is the time history of the system's output when the input is a in unit impulse and all initial conditions are zero i think we also talked about the impulse response of a system being its transfer function that's one of the ways of um, experimentally finding out uh, uh, system transfer function uh, step response is the most uh, important as far as this course is concerned and we we'll spend a lot of time on this is the time history of the system's output when the input is a unit step and all initial conditions are zero and also there is the ramp response the equivalently the the input is a unit ramp and all initial conditions are zero now the difference between step response and uh, ramp response is in the accuracy of following the input signal so typically what you'll do is you'll take uh, a trajectory uh, that is the input signal and either divide it up into steps or uh, equivalent uh, ramps ramps as a uh, ramps have uh, higher accuracy compared to uh, step now this is a typical uh, second order system with no zeros step response unit step response so here we have the magnitude of the unit step of course at one the red line um, this is the final value here three as you can see this step response settles at uh, uh, three now you can talk about various specifications how fast the signal moves what is the time to for this the signal to settle down what is the overshoot so on and so forth so let us look at this formally so you have something called a rise time the rise time is the time taken by the output to go from 10 percent of the final value to 90 percent of the final value the peak time is the time taken by the output to hit its first peak Or maximum value the settling time usually is given by n percent settling time is the time taken for the system uh, system output to go within an n percent band around the final value stay there now you can the you cannot have the system settling down exactly at the final value in finite time so this system to reach an output value equal to 3 will take infinite time so typically what you do is you say you're satisfied as long as the signal remains within an error band that is given by these green dotted lines that's an error band so then you find out what's the time taken for the output signal to first enter this error band and remain there in this case it's right here which is 1.05 uh, seconds or something like that so that's the settling time 
uh, overshoot is the maximum over the value over the final value given by m typically it's given as a percentage of the final value and it's called percentage overshoot and of course there's the steady state error is the difference between the output and the input at t equal to infinity so let's look at the transfer function for the second order system as we've seen before uh, transfer function is given by g of s equal to kdc times omega n squared divided by s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared there is no there are no zeros here uh, just two poles and various parameters kdc is the dc gain omega n is the undamped natural frequency zeta is the damping constant now we'll look at uh, the underdamped case and of course the stable case so zeta is between 0 and 1 when zeta is between 0 and 1 this equation here the characteristic equation here has complex roots and those complex roots are given by minus zeta omega n plus or minus i times omega n times root of 1 minus zeta squared you can plot these in the complex plane the x-axis is the real axis the y-axis the imaginary axis and these two roots s1 is going to be here that's with a plus sign and s2 here this one is going to be here that is with the minus sign now the distance of these roots from the imaginary axis that's the real part of the root is zeta omega n with a negative sign the distance of the root from the real axis is given by the complex part uh, which is also given by omega d which is equal to omega n times root of 1 minus zeta squared uh, incidentally omega d is called the damped natural frequency and then the distance of the root from the origin is given by omega n so this distance is nothing but this squared plus this squared and root of that and you can find it out by Pythagoras theorem you will see that it is omega n now the angle that the line drawn from the origin to the root makes with the imaginary axis is given by theta which is sine inverse of uh, zeta that again you can derive uh, so this distance is zeta omega n this is omega n so this distance by this distance here gives you the sine of this angle and therefore theta equal to sine inverse of zeta 